Well, it shows a, you know, an act of protest. They're, they're activists. I'm the boss, okay? I found out that I could say whatever the fuck I wanted to in art and not get arrested. <laughs> It, it says, thou shalt have but one house. You know, um, all these greedy fuckers with more than one house, you, know, you can only live in one at a time. Yeah? Uh, old Aboriginal saying. I don't have a, a visual diary. Like, um, and sometimes I'll wake up, you know, and I'll, oh, damn, there's, maybe it'd be just a name, but I'll know from that name. At the beginning, there's um, the idea, you know, and then I'll come up with the text. Property is, is the most popular wealth creation scheme in this country. You know, this is a suggestion to this nation. Yeah? Pay the rent. You know, like, uh, we're, we're the owners. We will always be the owners of this place. This is a, a picture of a young woman from this year's Invasion Day march. Um, the invasion Day uh, for the state here you know, is actually Australia Day, and it celebrates the arrival of the first fleet which is just an outrageous insult to us, you know. Like, um, and so we respond by calling that day Invasion Day, and we have marches every year. Brisbane has a, a history of protest, even though uh, it's one of the most conservative cities in the country. It, it's certainly conducive to making art. Uh, I had a very different art education to, to most people. You know, like, um, I found people that I that I thought knew about art. You know, like, and I interrogated them very often in league with beer and barbecues and that sort of thing. So from what I saw of it, all the discourses w were around white people and started by white men. You know. I didn't want to participate in that, so I wrote my own fucking discourse. <laughs> I wrote an essay. Uh, that are called Bell's Theorem. <laughs> it, it essentially allowed me to you know, um, position myself in contemporary art. Where you at? You at, you at? you at home? Yeah, I'm coming to, towards your place now. Got so, it's such a big story. He's way more famous than me. Jump up to that standard, you know? Like uh, talking to Richard in the 1980s, you wouldn't reckon he knew anything about fucking art. <laughs> I was 21. I was curious. I wanted to know about the so-called Black Power movement. They were active, so they, they didn't sit back waiting around. They ended up giving me a a job in the Aboriginal Legal Service. You know, like, um, they taught us about Aboriginal history, they taught us about the law, public speaking, bail applications for people, like all those experiences within the Aboriginal rights movement. You know, learned so much. Amazing, you know, like, uh, it's formed the basis for uh, my art practice. to well-known Indigenous artist born here in Charleville. He's on his way through. It's fantastic to see. It's Richard Bell. G'day, Richard. How are you? What got you into art? Um, it was an accident. You know, like, um, my, my brother, um, Marshall, uh, he wanted um, to get into art and craft. You know, like, um, 
And we, I started out in tourist art. I was making boomerangs and spears and you know, uh, didgeridoos and stuff like that, you know. And we went in d different directions. You know, like I, I wasn't fortunate enough you know, to, to get um, the Aboriginal side of, of the, that education. Marsh got that, so. I went uh, more to what had happened and transpired in my life, you know, like, um, and I, I've called on that, you know, my life experience to, to make up. You're travelling around out here in the West, most towns you're, you're running into family. Yeah. That's nothing <laughs> unusual. No, uh, yeah. no. I'm going to Mitchell this afternoon uh, to have a look at where I lived and where uh, my home got bulldozed. So. This town was, was really racist. I didn't realise how racist until I, I, I moved away. You know, I realised that I had to reinvent myself. So, and I couldn't do that here. Uh, I had to go somewhere else. Sixteen, New Year's Eve. I left. I left home to go to a party. <laughs> Just didn't come back. <laughs> from that party, I just kept going. I was thinking it might be a bit further this way because we'd have to look through the trees you know, to, to see the school bus that, that went by that picked up the white kids Along, along this road, but not us. We weren't entitled to, to get that bus. So, so. and I didn't, uh, I didn't think that much of, about it. You know, like I just thought, oh, fuck it, I don't want to get on a bus with all them white, uh, cheeky white kids anyway. You know, like, uh, maybe it's over there a bit further. Yes. Um, oh, here it is. Here, this, this is where it was. Well, this is a long time ago. This is like 1968. I was, I was 14 at the time. The federal government gave all the councils around the country with uh, Aboriginal populations money, you know, to um, send infrastructure over to us, you know, like running water. We had no running water here. I think somebody had the bright idea to, you know, um, remove us so that they didn't have to spend this money on us. And I assumed that they spent it elsewhere looking after themselves. Yeah, the lazy fuckers couldn't even, you know, you know clean it up properly, you know? Like, God damn it, you know? This is the bed that me and my brother shared, you know, like, so, fuck me. Yeah. They couldn't even take the fucker away, you know, like, you know they, they come, they, they couldn't do a job. Yeah. Look at all this. <laughs> the the nature of what I do, you know, requires me also to be uh, to be positive. You know, what what looks like an impossible task, you know, I, I don't believe is impossible. I think um, anything is possible. I make art for other Aboriginal people. That's who I make it for. That's my audience. Like, um, and I, I want them to be empowering to, to them. Just say 